Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're greeted by the now familiar sight of our CBR1000 uh, engine crankcase and uh, she's looking a little thin up top. Hence, for this stage reassembly we'll be starting with the pistons and cylinders. Now our first job will be to install our new rings. Uh, now do note the two upper compression rings have a different profile. Um, the top one's kind of got a bevel on each side, top and bottom. And uh, the second ring is kind of a I, don't know, I guess you call it a trapezoid, trapezoidal shape. I think that's what that word is. Anyway, words are hard. But um, make sure that you get those correctly positioned with the uh, markings facing upwards. And then the lubrication rings consist of uh, two thin rails with a spring spacer between them. And it's recommended to stagger the gaps at 120 degrees each, uh, with the side rail gaps, you know, two centimeters on either side of the spacer gap. There's a, a handy diagram in the factory service manual, and I'm not personally convinced that this will do anything once the rings are free to spin as they please, but uh, really there's no reason not to. So back at the crankcase, we can install our alignment pins. As well as the uh, cam chain guide. And then we can carefully install our gasket. Uh, noting these oil passages will line up and these will line up. That's how you tell which side is up. And you obviously don't want to stretch this or bend this too much. Now we install our pistons back on our con rods, along with the clips. When I install the clips, I like to keep a rag underneath the piston just to uh, prevent it from falling into the engine. It popped out. Also upon installation, uh, do make sure to oil or grease the wrist pins before reassembly. I forgot to film that step. Just like so. Now we can grab our cylinders. Now I put a little bit of grease on this, um, just to give us a little bit of a fighting chance here. And you do want to make sure to uh, oil, up the, oil up the piston nice. Just help it slide a little better. Now you ratchet it down, and you kind of want just a little bit of the piston sticking out on top. I like that. And we'll do the same for the number one cylinder. Now we'll take a step of this. Uh, again, you want to make sure to oil the cylinders. And as we're installing it, we need to pull the uh, cam chain tensioner, well the cam chain slide, sorry, a little bit forward in order to clear these cylinders.
Now, if we line the pistons up, And once you feel it start to, uh, to line up on the lip of the piston, move to the other piston and do the same thing. There. Okay. Now, honestly, I expect the next few steps to be uh, pretty miserable to film. Uh, nobody likes doing this job. And there's like an 80% chance that uh, I'm gonna get it wrong and I fill around with it to get everything to line up. But um, what we do is basically and try to work them in slowly until we see that we've cleared the rings on pistons one and four. Kind of like that. Now we can loosen these. Now we simply line them back, uh, well we line them up on cylinders two and three now. So it's been several tries later and I finally got it. Um, one thing I found that was actually a good tip, um, in the service manual it recommends setting cylinders one and four to top dead center, clamping those ones in first, and then leaving these down at the bottom instead of trying to uh, rotate the engine and bring them up. Um, just found alignment was a little easier and um, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Um, the snap ring pliers I used are obviously way too thick to fit in there, so I just had to use my fingernail and uh, kind of dig away at it. As I say, Takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but uh, anyway, as I say, I think I've got it.
Now, I'm afraid the, uh, the memory card died. I was just, well, ran out of room. I was trying to explain, uh, if you saw me tap in earlier, what I was doing. So I was using the end of my hammer. I'd noticed that cylinder two was a little bit um, out of position. I could tell this from looking at the gap around the piston. And so what I was doing is I was seating um, a piece of wood, in this case the end of a hammer, and just tap a tap in like that. You definitely don't want to use very much force. Um, very, very gentle. I just, just as I say, I wanted to unwedge that piston so I could get it down. And um, the result, happily enough, looks pretty good. We're rotating it by hand. We'll give it just one more final kind of good luck oil. Because uh, we know it's going to be sitting for a few days while we reassemble the cylinder head. Now we'll just try to make sure those cylinder walls are nice and, nice and loose for us. And we'll leave it at top dead center. So, as I say, yeah, piston rings, you know, last episode I said hard part was over. Piston rings are another definitely tricky part of the job. But, um, it's more of a dexterity thing. Like, once you kind of, um, once you get it started, it's not too bad. And it's, it's no big deal. Just make sure don't, you know, pound on it if you've noticed the ring's in crooked. You know, pounding on it isn't going to help. It's just going to break or bend the ring. So, if you're careful, even, uh, even with no experience, if you're careful and you pay attention to what the rings are doing, um, this job shouldn't really upset too many, uh, too many people. It's just a little tricky and can be a little frustrating. So again, one of those jobs that, you know, as you're running out of patience and you're starting to, uh, to lose focus, you know, you just walk away from the bike or walk away from the engine. Come back to it when you're ready to, uh, to give it a good, uh, give it your full attention. But yeah, so this thing's starting to look more like an engine. And uh, in the next episode, we're gonna revisit the cylinder head reassemble our cylinder head uh, with our new seals. Going to leak test it one final time and uh, then we'll mount it on top of this. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.